diverticulitis. Uh, this is a short presentation about the diverticulitis and especially I will concentrate mainly on the management for patients with diverticulitis. Again, this is summarized from Cameron. Uh, before I start the management, I have to mention the Henshi classifications, of course. Uh, for Henshi classifications, uh, you have to know that there is Henshi and now nowadays we have also the modified Henshi. Uh, I want you to concentrate only on the Henshi up to now. Uh, to know the classification, to memorize it as usual. We mentioned that the points how to memorize. Uh, we have two words, which is, which are the abscess and uh, peritonitis. If you know them, you can say the classification very easily. So abscess is for class one and two, and peritonitis for class three and four. Now, <clears throat> for class one, that abscess is pericolic, and for class two, it's pelvic, intraabdominal, or retroperitoneal. So this is the difference between class one and two. Uh, I'm talking about Henshi, not modified Henshi. Now concentrate only on Henshi. Now for class three and four, we have the peritonitis. Peritonitis, if that is simply, if that is purulent, so this is three, and if that is fecal, that is four. Okay, so this is Henshi. Now the modified Henshi, it's the same for class two, three, and four. So the difference only in class one. Here we have, class 0 which is mild clinical diverticulitis and class 1a if that is confined inflammation and 1b confined abscess so the abscess in modified Henshi is present in uh, 1b class 1b go back now to <coughs> Henshi the uh, the usual the traditional the previous one I mean so we have only two words, as I mentioned, memorize only two words, which are the abscess and peritonitis. And one point about phlegmon. Phlegmon is present in class one, even in the absence of, uh, of abscess. If there is a phlegmon, so this is class one. And class 1a, if that is modified Henshi. That's it regarding Henshi. By the way, I did still, I didn't find any MCQ regarding the modified Henshi uh, in our main textbook for MCQs. Sorry. Now, the clinical picture for diverticulitis, we can classify them into those patients who are unstable or, had, or have uh, peritonitis and those who are stable and have no peritonitis, okay? Of course, if the patient is unstable or have peritonitis, you'll take him directly to the OR without performing a CT. And the safest answer, the safest operation is Hartman, okay? So for those unstable or peritonitis. Now if the patient is stable or have no uh, stable and have no peritonitis, so we'll perform CT and by the CT, of course, you can get that Henshi classification and also can tell you about uh, if that is uncomplicated or complicated. Uncomplicated or complicated. Complicated means that the patient have perforation, obstruction, fistula, or abscess. Okay. Now the uncomplicated, again, we can classify them. Classify them ac according to what? According to immunocompromised and uh, immunocompromised and healthy. Immunocompromised examples for them are chronic renal failure, transplant, connective tissue disease. For those immunocompromised per persons, uh, if they have one attack, one single attack, you have to perform resection, even from the first single attack you have to perform resection for them and uh, for those healthy healthy patients uh, for for the first attack or even second attack or third you can what you can do power rest one dose of IV antibiotics OBD with the PO antibiotics usually the Cipro and Metro for seven days uh, as I mentioned, OPD and colonoscopy after six to eight weeks, you have to roll out the malignancy. And you don't need to perform surgery for those persons. Previously, they mentioned that if this is more than four attacks and some textbooks more than five attacks, you have to perform uh, surgery. Nowadays, it's no more applicable. You have to perform according. If there is a complication, yes. If the patient has no complication, check whether he is immune compromised or not. If not immune compromised, so give him OPD and follow him up. Okay. Uh, yes, you may have it in the MCQs. Some textbooks MCQ, uh, for the MCQ, uh, MCQs regarding this point, they have that the answer is more than four attacks. But don't follow it 
uh, nowadays. Okay, next. Complicated. Complicated, we have fistula, perforation or obstruction, or abscess. Abscess in detail, we'll talk about it next slide. Now, the fistula, you have to investigate the fistula for sure, and CT is best. What do I mean by that? Especially for the colophysical fistula. This is a common question that what is the best investigation to identify the, fist, the presence of fistula in a patient with uh, diverticulitis? It's the CT, it's not the fistulogram. Uh, and then you have, of course, to perform the surgery. Now, perforation or obstruction, this is emergency surgery. If the patient has abscess, you have to identify. That is hinge one, hinge one and two, or hinge three and four. I put them together because the management for them, one and two is the same, and three and four is the same. I will talk about it here, okay? Now, diverticular abscess, we mentioned into hinge one and two, or hinge, sorry, here is three and four, okay? Uh, hinge one and two, less than four centimeter, or more than four centimeter. Less than four centimeter, you can give him IV antibiotics. This is usual. The number less than four centimeter, even for the appendix, if you have a particular abscess, less than four centimeter, usually you manage it conservatively. Actually, the radiologist will not be able to uh, drain that one. So less than four centimeter is IV antibiotics, and that will resolve mostly, spontaneously. After that, so you have to give him OBD, colonoscopy after six to eight weeks, and then you have to perform the surgery. Don't miss that point, because this is the ventricular abscess, which is a part of the complication. So complicated diverticulitis should always go to surgery. Okay, after the OBD, of course, and uh, I mean after some time and after doing colonoscopy by excluding the malignancy. Now the other point is if that's if that abscess is more than four centimeter, so IV anti antibiotics alone will not be enough. Uh, so you will check first: is that accessible? If that is accessible, so CT guided drainage. If not accessible, so you have to perform the surgery, unfortunately. Sorry. Now, now this is class NG3 and 4. Again, this is a mistake, I'm telling you. Uh, that is NG3 and 4. So you have to perform Hartman. This is the safest answer. But if someone asks you, is there any option? Yes, resection and stomosis, and stomosis with stoma. Okay? Now, some will mention after reading too much, they will mention the lab peritoneal lavage. I don't advise at all to mention that point. Uh, this is actually in HNC3, you do it, not HNC4, and most guidelines do not support this unless intraoperatively you cannot resect. So again, this is only in HNC3, and this is most guidelines do not support it unless intraoperatively you cannot resect uh, that segment. So. This is uh, the end of the uh, presentation, actually, uh, by mentioning the diverticular abscess. So we mentioned how we can approach the patient in the term of uh, management uh, regarding the abscess, obstruction, perforation, fistula, and whether healthy or immunocompromised. Uh, I hope that I concluded the summary for uh, diverticulitis. Thank you.